previously on Mowers and Blowers. At Mowers and Blowers. Fading at feet. So not too. To assemble it, the guy found. Another free tractor. This is the. Uh mowers and blowers hey guys how you doing it's henry at mowers and blowers good morning it never fails the minute i come out here the landscapers want to blow their leaf blowers it's like it's exactly when i start talking anyway so today, I was gonna work on either this or the scooter. Both of them need work. The scooter doesn't really run right. I think that uh, the air intake is being blocked by oil. I'll show you when you see the video. And then this one over here, I got wires coming out of there. I don't know, the harnesses are different from the engine swap, so I gotta figure that out too. Still got plenty, plenty to do. There's always something to do. Never not working. I'm never not working. However, I have more pressing issues. As you guys recall, when I bought Sketchy the truck, the right door wouldn't open from the outside. So it was the actuator in the door, the plastic tab had broken so that the rod wasn't held onto the plastic tab. So I couldn't open the door. So I took the door apart, I bought a new actuator and I put it in and it worked great for the past, uh, I don't know, three months or so. And then yesterday I was working on a review product for Sketchy, the center Apple CarPlay screen that I put in. Well then, won't open again. You can open the door from the inside and when you lock and unlock it, the thing goes up and down. It's just that you can't open the door from the outside. You know, I think the first time this happened, it was that it wouldn't lock, you know what I mean? And you couldn't open it from the inside. So I think it's like the, a, the other tab is broken off of it. I paid like 30 bucks for it. It was a third uh, aftermarket part. But uh, I mean, it's really cheap plastic that they make it with. So I'm almost thinking that I should take it apart, right? And JB weld that joint. JB Weld is like steel. It's gonna be stronger than plastic, you know? So that's what I'm gonna to try to do. It's kind of a pain in the balls to take that door apart, but you gotta do what you gotta do. I can't get into that door. Let me show you something. So here's the latch, right? When you close the door, it pushes this in, right? Here. You close the door, pushes that in, so it locks it right if you pull this it unlocks it right. when I do it again close the door For goodness sakes if I do it again close the door right it locks it but then when you pull the handle Nothing, nothing happens. So either one rod came off or the tab broke. Either way, there's three crazy bolts here. As you can see, I had to drill something to get that to be able to turn. And this is Torx. Got to take this panel off. Plastic thing pulls out. Reach your hand in there and see what's going on.
So good news, good news. Once I took the panel off, I could see exactly what was wrong. The rod going from the handle that goes down here, a plastic clip goes right onto that rod. This rod has threads in it. The plastic thing slipped off the um, threads. So to keep the plastic thing at that rod, that so it doesn't slip in and out of the plastic, I put some JB welds on the top. <laughs> so once that hardens, it becomes like steel, almost like a screw holding the threads and the plastic thing in place so it doesn't slip up and down. So what was happening is when you pull the handle, the plastic thing is here, the rod goes in like that. I know what you guys are thinking, shame on you. And it goes in, it slips. So I just put JB weld here so that it won't slip anymore. Hopefully that'll work. I won't put this together until it dries so I can test it for a while, you know. In the meantime, I guess we're gonna work on the wiring the tractor. Okay, the issue at hand. I love this new stool. Anyway, uh, this is the swapped engine, the replacement engine. The original uh, wiring harness was just four wires going into a module. Four wires don't fit into the new engine's five wires. And I tested all these wires. They just, one of them gives out like 80 volts of electricity. So I have a feeling because this is a 17 horsepower and the old original engine is a 15 horsepower. This one doesn't have a uh, voltage regulator. Therefore the four wires coming out of here was good enough to start this engine. And that's all you need is four wires. Magneto, solenoid, positive, negative. That's all you need is four wires. And that's why that is four wires. No voltage regulator. Here we got the voltage regulator. And it's got a million wires coming out of this, going out of there. And no matter how I tried to test it to see if these things will go together, I don't know what's what there. Happy birthday, Henry! Thanks, Quinn! It was my birthday, October 27th. It's like November 8th now. Anyway, so I was thinking, the only difference is this uh, engine cover with the voltage regulator. If I bypass or just take this cover off with the four, with the six wires, five wires, and put the original cover back on here without the voltage regulator, you're thinking to yourself, okay, well, that's still not going to be good because obviously this one has a high output stator. So it would fry your battery if you, you did that. So I'm just going to take the cover off, flywheel off, the fan off, and the stator off and replace it with the 15 horsepower stator. Put everything on the top of that engine onto the top of this engine and connect the original four wires meant for that engine to this uh, harness. That's the easiest way I know how to do. Uh, not that it's easy because you got to take off two flywheels, which is a pain in the balls. So I'm going to get to work on that and we'll see what we come up with. All right, you guys are uh, seeing from time lapse. I was talking to some neighbors and stuff, but I wanted to stop the video to show you guys that, uh, how I remove flywheels. I mean, you know, you guys have seen it a million times, but there may be new subscribers who say, hey, how's he gonna remove that? Well, I don't have a pull or anything. I mean, I do, but it doesn't work. So you just take a, um, after you take off the top uh, fan shroud, you find like an area. You see how there's like this, this nub that sticks up that's molded into the top sump cover? But you get like a crowbar 
and you just push down so that you give the flywheel upward motion. I replaced the crankshaft bolt back in here so that you have something to hit because the crankshaft bolt is connected directly to the crankshaft. So you're, you're giving downward force with the sledgehammer while at the same time having upward leverage going upward on the flywheel. So you just give it a good whack while pushing down hard and it should bust free. There you go, look at that. Always works. Now you guys have, may have seen that on Tarrell's channel. That's, its, that's actually where I got it from. And it's foolproof, you know, as long as you whack it, a good whack, right? And you don't want to break the threads, which is why you hit the bolt, right? And then the upward motion with the, sometimes when you're trying to slam on this, you don't concentrate so much on the upward motion. So if you concentrate on the upward motion first, right? This will break free. There we go. And there is this, uh, you know what? Look at this stator, it's kind of warped. It's super rusted and warped. Maybe that's one of the reasons why we're getting some trouble, but I'm glad I'm gonna be uh, exchanging this because it almost seems like this entire engine was underwater at one time. So as you guys saw from time lapse, I'm uh, getting ready to remove this one and take the flywheel off of that one and put it on this one. But before I do that, oh, and by the way, did you guys see the uh, mouse nest that was in there? Not that it matters because this uh, engine is no compression. So it's just like a parts engine right now since I took off so many parts from it, the starter, and now I'm gonna rip the uh, stuff off of it. But I wanted to show you what I found out on that one. Check out the condition of that magneto. It's like this thing was underwater or something. That magneto's shot. Although it works, right? You guys know it works because this engine runs. And look at this stator. It's like warped. See? It's like bent. Downwards here, rises up there. Look at the amount of rust. So yeah, I'm just gonna take the stator and the magneto off of that put it on here. I don't know, should I take the magneto off? Because we know it works. Why why, why um, do something that, uh, why fix something that isn't broken? I mean, we it runs, so it works, right? So even though it looks like hell, it still works. Maybe if I swapped it, it won't work because <laughs> this, this magneto is much better conditioned, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna swap something out that works. But I am, the whole purpose is to swap that out. So, and this one, look, look how look how twisted it is. It's no good. So yeah, uh, I'm gonna remove the flywheel off of this one now. Let's see if we have as good a luck as we did on that first time. One shot. Oh, uh, see, this one's not gonna be good because it's not uh, uh, mounted on anything, so it's loose. So you lose your leverage that way. Unless you put your foot here and push down while you push down on this. There you go. Ah, I missed it. Yeah, it's no good. I think that did it. It took three good jolts. What the hell? I might not use this. Oh, you know why? Because when I banged on the bolt, the bolt is no longer the same size as this now. That's going to be a problem. There we go. That. Did you guys know that? that Kohler. Polar uh, flywheels only look. I mean, it looks like it's missing two uh, magnets, isn't it? And as you can see, this stator is in much better shape. Looks different too. So comparing the two flywheels, you got the old one here. 
not old, but the one on the tractor that runs, right? This is the one that runs, so this works. You can see there's a little chip of a magnet there, but it has all six magnets. This one, while it looks newer, looks like it's missing two magnets. Isn't that weird? If anything, this should run perfectly, but doesn't. And this, or, yeah. Yeah, right, so this should, but then this has the electrical problem thing. I don't know. Look, look at the serial numbers. 12, 3, 30,002. 12, 3, 30,002. So they're identical. No, I'm not doing it. Identical. The identical flywheels. Which one should I use? Should I use this one or should I use this one? Since this works, I should use this one. This also has the six magnets. Leave in the comments what you guys would do. So right now I'm just gonna take that stator off of that one and put it on this stator. This stator needs to be changed anyway. So as you saw, um, I put everything back. Uh, it was a pain in the balls because to get the module wires through this little hole, you have to take the, the wire pins out of the module. It was a pain. And then when I was putting the magneto on, I decided to use the newer magneto anyway because we did know it did work too. I broke the bolt while putting the, the, the studs in. Can you believe that? I have to drill that out now. Hopefully I'll be successful. So you remember what I said about earlier about not fixing something that's not broke? I should have just left the old one, the old magneto on there, but I decided to change it because it was attached to the stator. I didn't want to go through that trouble. But now I went through even more trouble. So not only did I try to drill out this broken bolt in there, but I went crooked and it came out over here on the side. Over here, I drew, tried to drill the regular one in there, right? Uh, but it's stripped because it's soft aluminum, right? So then I have two posts that are not broken, but you got a bolt in there and that's stripped. So I just drove some regular screws in there and it's tight enough, gapped correctly. It's just gonna have to do, man. It's just a hauler. So I got the wires all connected. I uh, reconnected the module four to four, right? And now when I turn it, it, it just clicks. If you take a closer look at the post of that solenoid, looks like it's melted on the inside. I think this uh, <laughs> solenoid's bad now. I gotta change the solenoid, it never ends. Got a brand new solenoid. I found it somewhere. <laughs> I'm gonna put this in, see what happens. All right, uh, my phone died so I couldn't record anymore, but I kept on going. Uh, I finished everything. Uh, redid the wiring harness to its original form, used that cover. Well, actually I used the same cover, but I took off the uh, wiring for the voltage regulator, right? Uh, I was worried that my magneto attachments with those two makeshift bolts, they seem to be holding okay. Uh, the left one is, less than 10 one thousandths air gap 
But the other one on the other side, the one with the broken bolt in it, that's a little bit more like 15 or 20 one thousandths. It should still get spark. Um, yep, everything seems to be in order. Uh, change the solenoid to a brand new one. And uh, let's see if it starts. <laughs> oh my god, oh my god. What do you guys think? I think after all that, it works? Let's go. All that work for just a hauler. I know it doesn't seem like it's worth it, but you know, you gotta do what you gotta do, right? Otherwise it wouldn't be a running tractor. Anyway, as you guys can see, it's it's filthy. And I've already shut off my sprinkler pipes for the winter. But luckily my neighbor Steve still has his uh, spigot on, so he let me use his water. I'm gonna connect my uh, uh, power washer to it and to his water and uh, hopefully we'll clean this out a little bit more. wash the engine too. Jason of Pate's Performance came by. He needed a hood. It's jamming away, bro. I sent you the video. I sent you the original video of the hunt, right? So you can put that in there. Uh, you know, I didn't even look at it. Oh, but yeah, I will put that in there. Yeah. So Jason came over. He has a Troy built hood that he's been trying to get um banged out. Whatever has dents and cracks in it. And so he emails me. He says, "Hey Henry, do you have a Troy built hood?" And I says, "Well, it's kind of like charcoal blue or black." He's like, "I don't care. I'll paint it." So he came over. I've had this damn thing for two years. I, I just gave it to him. <laughs> Perfect. He's a lifesaver. He saved me off. No, he's a lifesaver. You know why? Some aggravation of I, was, I was doing a review and I blew a fuse. Who even has these kind of fuses? 
not me. Not, not so, so if Jason's coming over to pick up the hood, I go, hey, you got any of these fuses? <laughs> he goes, yeah, and he brings one over. Brings one over. So now I don't gotta go to a store and get it. Thanks, Jason. Thank you. Bye, Jason. <laughs> awesome. This is what blowing out your sprinklers on the East Coast is. Okay. I'm showing them what sprinklers, blowing out sprinklers is like in the winter. So they just blow smoke through all the zones, get all the water out so it doesn't freeze in the winter. And then your pipes don't blow. You guys know that, I've done it myself. Pain in the butt, but gotta do it. The joys of living on the East Coast. So a lot of work for just the hauler, huh? But nevertheless, we still had to get it fixed. Otherwise, it's just a piece of junk, right? That doesn't run. If it's running, you can still sell it. And ride it around for fun. Uh, we're gonna have to fix the hood next, get the lights to work, tape up the seat, and that's it. And I'll list it for sale for like, uh, $350? Yeah, like $350, $375, something like that. Uh, people need haulers, haul their boats around, uh, pull a trailer, put a plow on, whatever, you know? It's pretty cool. Uh, anyway, this engine, will we get a starter for it in the future? Uh, <laughs> Magneto, well, we have a Magneto, but uh, another, actually, I have a stator. Yeah, maybe we'll get this going someday soon. Uh, not that soon. <laughs> anyway, as you saw, I, I put my door back together works great and that was an easy fix so I'm, I'm happy I got Sketchy's door fixed we got this all worked out perfect fantastic so far it's only been two episodes for this probably need three because I want to show you guys me fixing the hood and um, the lights and all that stuff but uh, so stay tuned for that uh, next episode will probably work on the uh, scooter but I uh, hope you guys have a good day and we'll see you guys next time on mowers and blowers Next time on Mowers and Blowers. Later.